So Split 3 hasn't exactly started perfectly for me. The global item nerfs have hit Trinimir pretty hard, and for the first time since I started playing him a year ago, I am forced to start one chicken him. So, while I have been scrambling trying to stick to the fundamentals and pick another brain dead champion who has a similar playstyle, I have been trying to find other ways to lock in. Whether it's sleeping at proper times, listening to other educational league content, or simply watching Whip or run it down in some good old champion skew, I have been trying to get that extra 1 or 2% here or there to make up for the fact that my champion got absolutely nuked this patch. And as sad as this is, the best place I found these edges was actually by reducing the time I spent playing league with my friends. So in this video, we'll discuss the reality of playing league with your friends, are your friends helping you achieve your potential rank or holding you back, and how we can try to find the best of both worlds. If you guys are new here, my name is Rabies and I make unique climbing content for the average League of Legends player. If you want to see more of this stuff, like and subscribe. So let me ask you guys this, what percentage of your league gaming time is spent playing with your friends? Is it 50%, 20%, even 100%? There's no real right or wrong answer here. For the vast majority of us, we were introduced to League through our friends and we most likely keep playing the game because of them. It's an incredibly fun experience, just you and the boys queuing up playing different champions in a very high stim environment. Now League can be fun by itself in solo queue or testing out builds and norms, but there's something else about playing the game with your friends and experiencing the highs and lows of the game that brings out a completely new dimension to League. Personally, I've always been the most addicted to League when I'm I'm playing with my friends. I'm able to play it for hours and hours without stopping, knowing there's people that are obsessed with this game as much as I am. Now, while this can be wholesome and cute, understand that it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Playing with friends can have a lot of negative consequences, with the main one being that you're reliant on them for your excitement and enjoyment. What happens when they have other priorities or simply find a new game to play instead? It's not going to hit the same now, would it? Additionally, the League of Legends rank system is notorious for cultivating toxic friend groups where people go out of their way to make each other feel like shit because of how good they are at the game. Stuff like stalking each other's OPGs, rank shaping to win an argument, or flaming the better player when they should have carried. See, League's rank system is built to replicate the chase of social status in real life. For males especially, it can be such a primal instinct, which is why a lot of us are addicted to climbing the ladder in solo queue. This is especially considering the fact that Riot has explicitly stated that they have no plans to make your rank hidden in the client or on third party websites, meaning they want your rank to be publicly displayed to reinforce the notion of substituting rank for status. When exposed to highly competitive and or corrosive personalities, this can be a nightmare to be a part of. The constant belittling, toxic expectation and passive aggressive slights just might not be worth the enjoyment of playing league with quote unquote friends. I'll have a more in-depth video on the psychological side of this topic in a few weeks so make sure to subscribe to stay tuned to that. Now with the preamble out of the way, ask yourself this question. Are your friends helping you achieve your potential rank or holding you back? Now, here's where things get a little tricky. Are your friends holding you back and how can you even track some shit like that? This all comes down to where you stand in the hierarchy of your friend group. From seasons 2 to season 8, I was anywhere from the bottom to the middle of my friend groups. I was quite bad at the start and I wasn't really used to playing competitive video games, so playing with my more experienced and higher ranked friends helped me in learning concepts and interactions that would have taken me a while to learn by myself, especially because they weren't too mean about teaching me that stuff either. Now here's the interesting part. Around seasons 5 to 6, I was still hard stuck silver but my mechanics had blossomed and I had garnered quite a good rep from my plat plus friends for my insane mechanics as a Lucian and Vayne player. That being said, I was still bad at climbing the ladder and I didn't even really have the motivation for it. I had started using the adulation and praise I was getting from my friends as a proxy for climbing the ladder. This comes back to what I discussed earlier with rank mimicking social status. The only reason why I cared about my rank was because of the prestige it got me in my friend group. With that prestige and status already being given to me because of my mechanics, I didn't really have a reason to care about rank anymore. This notion of caring what people thought snowballed even further with me developing crippling ranked anxiety because I was too afraid of queuing up and losing games and staying a low rank and having my friends change their opinion of me. I know for a damn fact that I'm not alone here. Think about your own journey up until this point. Is this something you can relate to? Do you also have a good reputation from your friend group to the point where it demotivates you from climbing ranked altogether? Or are you not climbing ranked to preserve that decent reputation within your friend group? And then ask yourself, is that even a bad thing in the first place? To help answer that question, I'll explain more of my story. After taking a full break in season 7, I came back in season 8 and quickly regained my previous rank of gold. However, I noticed that my mechanics were about like 80% of what they 
they used to be. And I started experiencing issues like carpal tunnel and nerve adhesions for the first time in my life. By season 8, I was 19 years old going into 20. And by this time in my life, I had finally started to stop caring so much about other people. The old high school friend group that was so near and dear to my heart went our separate ways, which is the problem that I highlighted earlier in the video. And the new people that joined our server didn't really hit the same, simply because they didn't know the lore or all the inside jokes. They were just new to the friend group. With not much of a friend group to look good for anymore, I simply started playing ranked for the love of the game. I went from gold to plat and eventually to diamond, and now I'm definitively the best player across all my friend groups. Now, <laughs> here's where I'm running into trouble again. As the best player, I don't gain the same amount of usefulness I used to by playing norms with friends. There's simply nothing left that most of them can ever teach me. I literally play with them for the fun. I play around 10 to 20 games with them over the weekend. Each game being about like 28 and a half minutes, that's roughly about 5 to 10 hours of league gameplay, not to mention queue times. The problem is, that's 5 to 10 hours not playing at my current rank. I'm playing league on easy mode, with and against some silver and gold players that don't even give me the best instincts and intuitions going into my ranked games. There's been so many times these days where I'm randomly getting solo killed in rain in my ranked games because I'm not used to that level of lane pressure, primarily because of those 5 to 10 hours playing against silver and gold players on the weekends. A lot of leagues comes down to intuition, and while my macro skills have already arguably even improved since I need to shot call my teammates through tricky situations, my mechanics and my sharpness have dropped significantly in the process. All this to say, how can we find the best of both worlds? Because I still love playing league with chill people. It's honestly one of the most fun things I've done in my life and I'm not planning on stopping anytime soon. However, if your friends are significantly lower than you in rank, you might be cooked because they'll be dragging you back into their elo without even realizing it. The best fix I have is to simply prioritize figuring out the rank ladder. No one is telling you to abandon your friends or anything like that, but you'll need to reframe your priorities. League of Legends is like a puzzle, guys. When you figure it out and start climbing, the puzzle will get bigger and there will be more pieces to fill. Instead of worrying about what percentage of your time you should dedicate to playing with your friends. Instead, worry about doing your best to solve that puzzle and then do whatever you want to do with the rest of your time. This kind of priority calibration is much better for you in the long run because it scales with how badly you really want it. If you're serious about climbing, you'll naturally put more time into games and reviews and if you'd rather have fun with your friends instead, you'll prioritize that. There's no real right or wrong here, simply coming face to face with what you really want and how you're going to manage your time to get it. However, this might not be the answer that some of you might be looking for. Like me in the past, some of you play league specifically for the prestige that it gives you within your friend groups. While that's the intended byproduct of the rank system, it's important to acknowledge that you're falling into the addiction trap that Riot has laid out for you. One of the worst things you can do in your league journey is to spend time trying to get better for other people. That shit will never work in your favor guys, you're putting your joy and fulfillment in the hands of someone else. If you're watching this and you're in high school or college or some shit, understand that friend groups tend to shrink as people begin to have other priorities later in life. There's also the added problem that playing with your friends doesn't actually do anything. Sure, it can be fun and exciting, but when the day's over and you're going to bed, you will eventually start to feel like you didn't really do anything with your time. All that time you spent playing will just combine into one giant haze at the end of the day. It's funny because when it comes to playing video games, there can be more productive ways to spend your time on it. Playing with friends can be exciting, but at the end of the day, it's just mindless instant gratification. You're playing right into the stereotype here. If you love the game, just invest time into getting better and figuring out the game. The higher and higher you go, it'll solve a lot of problems for you. You'll develop a better relationship with the game, not spam it constantly, and you'll eventually get good enough where you get that respect from your friends if that's what you so choose. But then again, if you're trying to get respect and status, I'd advise you to go out into the real world and climb the IRL ladder instead, instead of trying to accomplish it behind a computer screen. It'll be more beneficial for your life if you spend time and energy accomplishing things that will actually serve you in the long term. Don't mix exploring and solving League of Legends with prestige and status. Guys, that's not the same thing. So that's it for me for this video, guys. I have an additional video here where I talk about how to use norms as a way to get better at the game. Since you've come to terms with having to sacrifice some time with your friends in order to double down on your rank journey, give it a watch and start implementing those practices immediately. I'll see you guys there. That's it for me for this video guys and remember, anyone can get diamond.